Next, we'll discuss the income analysis sheet for major assignment one. Here, if you follow the numbered boxes, this will generally take you through the assignment in an orderly way. You also will want to complete as much as possible the items in the order provided. Sometimes this is required for later steps. Here, for example, you'll notice that some of the data in column B down here is not yet filled in. That will happen once we enter our name up here in B1. As we continue, we read the instruction and then see what to do next. For part two, you'll be calculating the slope and intercept of the best fit line for the data provided, and then calculating predicted incomes based on the best fit. For the parameters, you've seen the slope and intercept calculations as part of topic one DQ2. And this works the same way. You simply use the formula slope and intercept. We enter the Y values first. We can select those by hand or type in a range. Press comma, type in the X values or select the range, close parenthesis, and that completes the slope. We do a similar calculation for the intercept. Note that we also need to format the slope and intercept. The formatting instructions are provided in text box two at the top here. And this also works as you've seen in the DQs. You select the cells that you want to format in the home tab number section, you would select number, and then you would use the decrease decimal button to change the number of decimals that display. The next step in section two is to calculate the average weekly incomes. This also is something that you saw in topic one DQ2. And let me note here that if you use fixed cell references for M and B, that is the dollar sign in front of the row or column reference that you want to stay the same, then you'll be able to copy this formula down the column. Here, for example, we have fixed cell references to the slope and intercept in our formula. The copy down functionality is invoked by hovering over the bottom right of the cell. We left click and dra drag down and that populates the values. While we're here, we also need to format the average weekly incomes as currency with two decimals. Our final step in number three is to create a scatter plot and also include in that a trend line and horizontal and vertical axes. To start out, we select the years of education and weekly income. From the insert menu at the top, we then select from the scatter plots submenu, the first scatter plot. And at this point, we would change the chart title, add and extend the trend line, and add horizontal and vertical axis titles. You've also seen this procedure in topic one, DQ2. And once you've completed your chart, it might look something like what we show at the bottom right in this screenshot. 
That concludes the income analysis sheet. Next, we'll talk about the unit conversions. Let me demonstrate switching to another sheet here. You just go down here to the bottom, you left click on the tab, and that'll take you to the next sheet.